In this video, we're going to talk about some of the newer alarm displays that have recently come out. These alarm displays give us a lot more flexibility than we had in the past. We have the ability to filter alarms by certain areas. We have the ability to filter alarms by criticality. So let's take a look at how we configure these new situational awareness alarm displays that are given to us in this 2014 R2 version. I'm an InTouch window maker. I'm going to browse into the situational awareness library that we give you out of the box. I'm going to browse into the alarm area. There's something called an SA alarm runtime page. I'm going to take one of those and put it on the screen. I'm going to resize it so it fits my screen. And then we basically have a custom property that we're going to configure. So I'm going to set this default variable to production. So when it defaults to that variable, when the control fires up the first time, I'm going to say OK. I'm going to go to runtime. And out of the box, you can see I'm pulling alarms. I don't have to worry about the alarm queries. It knows about the structure that I've defined inside my system in the model view. So it's going and defining this structure for me automatically from what I defined inside the IDE. So when I put my system together, I created this model view. I made a model of my plant, my different areas. You can see the production area has line one, line two, and it has equipment underneath each of those. So it brings this structure over into the alarm control so that I could do some filtering on this alarm area. So if I want to choose line one, it's going to show me only line one alarms in this case. I can drill down and I'm going to see line two alarms. So it's only going to show me alarms that are associated with line two. Something very nice to be able to filter alarms by different areas. The other thing this control gives us is the ability to filter and look at alarms by criticality. We can define the alarm severities. We can define a critical alarm, high alarm, medium alarm, or low alarm. And we can segregate alarms by that severity. So right now I'm looking at all, and this control tells me how many alarms I have by those different severities. I have four critical alarms, I have four high alarms, four medium alarms, and four low alarms. If I want to drill down just into the critical alarms, this control gives me the ability to do that. So it's showing me that these are the alarms that we've defined at the, the highest level of severity, the critical level of severity. I can do things in this control like the other controls. I can acknowledge alarms. I can use this button here to acknowledge all my alarms. You can see it's going to take those alarms and acknowledge those. I can go to my packaging area. My packaging area has some alarms defined there. So there's all the alarms defined by the packaging area. I can do sort it by the severity level if I want. I want to see alarms based on the severity. So I only want to show the highest level alarms on top all the time using the severity sorting column. Another thing we can do with this alarm control is called alarm shelving. We have the ability to shelve an alarm, basically put an alarm on hold temporarily while there's something being fixed, whether it's something in your process or there's a bad transmitter out there. We can disable the alarm so it's not annoying the operator. It's not giving him nuisance alarms. The whole idea of the situation awareness graphics and, and the library is give the operator what they need so they can take some action. So if I look at this display here and I have these alarms being displayed, I can select, say, multiple alarms. Let's say I want to shelve this. I right click and I say I want to shelve the selected alarms and say, you know, bad wire. So now I have the ability in this control to see what alarms have been shelved, which is important. I want to know what alarms are not being used at this time. So it's telling me, hey, these speed signals here have been shelved. And you saw I gave it a time. So in an hour's time, it's going to come back and be a valid alarm again. So I also have the ability in this control to say I want to unshelve all my alarms to put them back in production. Just say OK. So now it's going to take them out of the shelve list. It's going to put them back in the standard alarm display. And those alarms are active again. This control also allows me to look at recent events. An event is defined as an operator's action. If he's changing a set point or acknowledging alarms or shelving an alarm. So those things are logged to the system so I can look at the recent events that happened using this control. So if I click on this event tab, you can see that these are the alarm shelve commands that I have given it recently. You can see I also changed the speed of a set point. So it's logging that information to the system so I can go back and look at it. So that is basically the new control, the situational awareness control to look at current alarms, current events, 
shows you a lot more functionality than we had in the past. The ability to drill in, filter by different areas, drill in, filter by different criticality, looking at the shelving of alarms, looking at events, a lot more information than we had in the previous alarm controls that we had. The other new alarm display that we have is the ability to go back and look at historical alarms. So we have the ability with System Platform and InTouch to log all the alarm information that we just looked at to a database to be able to go back in time and look at alarms and extract that information to do some analysis. So to configure the historical alarm graphic, drill down into that same place, Situation Awareness Library Alarms. There's something called an SA Alarm History page. I can put that on my screen. I'm going to resize that again so it fits my page. So I drop that on my screen. There is some custom properties and some wizard options I need to configure. It's going to ask me the name of my database. I'm going to take the A squared alarm database. That's the default database when I install system platform that gets created on my historian node. Another custom property called the server node name. Right now I am pointing to local host. I say OK. I'm going to go to runtime. So it's going to go out and it's going to connect to my A squared alarm database. You can see it automatically went and connected. It's pulling those alarms from that database. Notice up here, these are real time alarms in my alarm buffer. These are alarms coming from my database. So just like the upper real time alarms, I have the ability to sort by criticality. And you can see it's doing another query here. Every time I click on this, it's actually querying the database. Also has the ability to go back and look at those events. Right, so something we were looking up here are the events, but all those events, every time I do something from the operator perspective, I change a set point or I shelve an alarm or I do anything that the operator does, it's going to log that to my database so I can go back in time and understand what happened. You know, something happened at two o'clock in the morning, I can use this to go analyze this. You know, if you're in the pharmaceutical world, this is required to be able to log all operator actions to a database. So that's an overview of the two different new alarm displays that we have. The ability to collect real-time alarm information, bring it in the grid, the ability to filter it based on criticality, based on area. I have the ability also to go extract that information from the database, do some additional filtering on this, look at the events. Thank you for watching today. Need to learn more about this and other InSource products? Check out our training tracks designed to guide you down your learning path for InSource products. Whether you're using a classic InTouch and Historian architecture or using System Platform, we have a track to help you get the most out of your software investment. To register or learn more, click the link in the video description below. Thanks for watching this in-source video.